Hey first graders, it's Mr. Wedge. Today we're going to do a still life painting in the style of Paul Cezanne. So like Paul Cezanne, we're going to paint a still life of a plate of fruit. So we're going to set this up and look really carefully at the shapes, try to paint this. So you're looking straight down right now at this still life, but I'm going to look at it at an angle, you know, more like that. That's more like what my painting's going to look like. So you can set up your own at home, or you could follow along with me. It's up to you. Um, but we're going to paint a still life. And uh, you've got, you want to put your name on your paper first with a pencil. And you can also write a 1 for first grade. Flip it over, and we're going to uh, use water and a brush and some watercolor today. And it's up to you what you outline your shapes with, but that's the first thing we're going to do is draw some shapes with the brush. So pick any dark color. I'm going to pick blue. So I'm going to swirl it. And you want to swirl it for a long time because that's what gets the color really strong and gets a lot of paint on your brush. And you can actually go back and add more water. And just keep swirling it. Get your brush really loaded up. All right. You can't see it but there's an apple right in front of me and I'm gonna paint that first and the apples the closest thing to me so that's what you should paint first whatever is closest to you in your still life and it's real simple it's just a circle and I'm just gonna leave it like that and I'm not gonna paint it in I can see a little there's like a little divot with the stem sticking out of the apple right there um, next to the apple there's a lemon and the lemon's basically an oval. It's a little smaller than the apple, and it's got like a little bump right there. So I've got an apple and a lemon, and I'm just outlining my shapes right now, and I picked blue for my color. Behind it, in this still life that you can't see, but that I'm looking at right now, there's another apple, but I don't see the whole apple because it's kind of covered up by these two fruits. So this is where we're going to use some overlapping. I'm going to draw it like this is kind of coming out from behind. And then it disappears like that. And then it looks like this apple is behind these two. So as you go farther away, you go up. And there's also a little divot and a stem right there. Um, I can see a banana, but I don't see much of the banana because it's all the way in the back. So I'm just going to draw it just draw what I see. A little bit of it peeking out. And here's the stem. So there's the banana in the back. And then on this side in the back, there's grapes. And there are lots of little ovals and circles. But just like we overlapped these fruits, every grape uh, kind of gets overlapped. So you could almost draw it like ovals with little rainbows coming out the top and it makes it look like the bananas or uh, the grapes are more 3D. So overlapping is just a trick artists use to make their artwork look more realistic. So there we go. And I'm just using the tip of my brush to draw with. So there we go. I've got I painted all the fruit the way I saw it. I just looked at what was in front of me and I drew the shapes as best I could with my brush. It's all sitting on a plate and just like the fruit overlaps other fruit, it all overlaps the plate. So I'm gonna, um, here's how I'm gonna do the plate. I'm gonna draw a big oval that comes around and connects back to the top. So watch this. I'm gonna start with my oval, but if I hit something I'm gonna stop and keep going out the other side. That's overlapping. And then when I hit something, I stop, and I can't see the back of it because the fruit's covering it up. So now it looks like fruit on a plate. And there's one more thing we can do to make it look like it's sitting on a table. We can draw a straight line that goes right through the back of it, and that, that'll be the edge of the table in the back. So we can start at one end of the paper, and when we hit something, we stop, and then we keep going out the other side. And if I hit those grapes, I would stop and keep going, but... 
Looks like it just barely touches them. So there we go, I drew my still life and now I have to wait for this to dry completely before I add color. So I'm going to let this dry and we'll come back in a second. Alright, I came back and my painting's all completely dry now so I can paint colors on top of it. But I've got to look at what kind of colors I have. I know I've got yellow, red, and green. But this green is is kind of light green. This yellow's a little bit orangish. This banana's got yellowy green on the end. These reds are really dark, but they've got some light spots in them too. So I'm going to be mixing a lot of colors. And Paul Cezanne does that a lot too when he paints. So I'm going to work on one fruit at a time. And I know that this uh, lemon's yellow, so I'm going to swirl my paint in the yellow and paint part of it. But I'm just going to paint one little patch because Paul Cezanne kind of works in patches. And then he'll go back and add a little bit of a different color to it. Red and yellow are next to each other on the color wheel. So I could make sort of an orangish yellow right there. I can go back to my original one, but it'll still look a little bit different. So there's a patch. Maybe I can be brave and add some red to it. And that's more interesting than just making it solid yellow. So when you look at Paul Cezanne's paintings, they don't just have one color in them, there's like a bunch of different ones inside of it. Um, I'm going to do the apple, the green apple. So I add water to my paint and I swirl it and I start putting green in but I'm just gonna paint part of it just like one little patch of color and then I'm gonna go back and change it a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little blue to my green paint another patch of my apple And then I can go back and make a more yellowy green. I could add green to my yellow or yellow to my green. I'll paint another patch. It's still green, it's just a little bit different. You could even make it really dark in some spots. Like if I add a really dark color to my green. That's like a dark olive green. That's good at the bottom if you want to create shadows. That helps make it look more realistic too. So just little patches. And look at what's in front of you and you'll see different colors. And then you can start to change them a little bit and make some interesting uh, painting that way. And I'm going to go through and do all my fruit that way. So I got my fruit painted in. And I painted it in little patches of different colors because I noticed there wasn't just one kind of yellow in the banana. There were different kinds and different kinds of red. The grapes weren't all exactly the same color, so I made them a little bit different. And that's kind of how Paul Cezanne paints. So now I'm going to start working on the table. And for that, we can just do any dark color. Oh, and you want to remember if you're painting a shape, wait for it to dry before you paint the shape that's next to it. So what I did was I kind of jumped around. Because if you paint, you know, a yellow lemon and a red apple and they're both still wet, they'll, the colors will leak into each other. So just like when I waited for my blue to dry, you might want to wait for a fruit to dry before you paint right next to it. But I'm just going to keep going and do what I did and keep mixing different colors. Just paint little patches. You can do little scribbles and squiggles. I'm just going to keep going and working my way through and paint my table. There we go. And I left the plate white because it is white. And then I could start working on the um, wall in the back, but I want to make it kind of look lighter than the table. So they look a little bit different. So the table's dark. I'm going to make the wall light. And the way you do that is you just use 
a lot of water when you paint. And you could even take water and put it right on the paper and then add your color to it and that will make it lighter. So I'm going to work in patches of lots of different colors again. But I'm going to use a lot of water first. And this is called wet and wet. So you just put water down and then you drop the color into it. And it's up to you what colors you do. You just want it to look good. So there we go. And if you've got a big area and you want it to dry quickly, you can just take a tissue and roll it up into a ball. Make sure it's clean. And then you can just dab it like this. And that will make it lighter and it will make it dry quicker. So I just want to let this dry completely. So there we go, a Paul Cezanne style still life. Work hard, have fun.